In this video, we're going to talk about the new automated seasonality tool. Uh, just a little bit of background before I get into how the tool works. Originally, when we launched SoStocked, we were looking only at the last 180 days of your average sales. Now, those are all fine, but people wanted more. They wanted a way to automate their seasonality, to look at the historical trend of this, of this product, including all the peaks and all the valleys, and put that into the future seasonality. But if I wanted to actually look at the the future curves, the seasonal curves of that product, we didn't have a really really have a way to do it. The only way that we had was under sales spikes. We had these manual spikes here where you could put in a period of time and a percentage of increase or decrease. And some people would build out an entire year just on percentage increases and decreases. And some people still do prefer the manual sales spikes tool but we wanted to take it a step further. Uh, and so this is what I wanna show you today. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to scroll down here and we're gonna click on this off button. Whether it's on or off, you're gonna click on it and you're gonna turn this little button on. Now the default setting is going to be monthly. So what it's doing is it's taking this ASIN in this marketplace or, or region, in this case it's North America, and it's looking at its actual annual curve. Now, this product had a big stock out last year during Q4, which is awful, and overall it was just selling on a downward trend. But this is what it actually did last year. So based on this trend, we want to, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see these percentages. What it's actually doing is it's looking at how many units we sold each month and then calculating an average. That's this black line here. This black line represents 100% of your average for the year. So for example, in the month of January, I sold 606 units, which was 163% of my annual average. We do a lot better in January than we do the rest of the year, obviously. So if we take that math and we say uh, 606 units divided by 163% or 1.63, this tells us our annual average is 371 372 units per month. That is the annual average here. Does that make sense? So we're taking that annual average, and if I took this number, divided it by that number on any one of these, I'd get the same average. And all we're doing is we're plotting each month as a percentage above or below that annual average. And we do have some options here before I save this and turn it on. The first thing is we can do monthly, we can do weekly, we can do bi-weekly, or even quarterly. Now, my rule of thumb is the more granular you get, the more accurate it is. So weekly is the most granular you can get. We can't do daily, that would be insane, but we can do weekly, which is 52 calculations per year versus 12. So it's a lot more accurate because each week has its own seasonal percentage versus just an average of a month, which is usually 4.3 weeks. So we round it down to four. So they're not gonna match up perfectly, but weekly is gonna be more accurate. Okay, great. So let's, let's switch this to weekly, but you can do monthly or quarterly if you prefer. Next, I wanna just point out, if you have a product that wasn't selling for most of last year, or maybe this is a very unusual seasonal curve, don't turn on the automated seasonality for this product using its own seasonal curve. Because the whole purpose of this is to go, last year is a predictable standard year, and I want to duplicate that type of a sales year only using the growth that we're having this year or the shrinkage, maybe the decline in sales that we've had this year. But I want the trend to be the same. I want the curve to be the same. If that is not the case, and there's no reason to turn this on because you're basically saying duplicate something that doesn't make sense. So don't do that. What you can do is you can actually turn this off and you can find another product in your catalog. So you say maybe the salt and pepper shaker is a more realistic trend for this particular product. And I wanna use this trend and I wanna save this trend uh, for my current velocity on the product that I'm working on right now. Great, then you can take that and just over overwrite it and use weekly or monthly, whatever. You can even change to you know different marketplaces, different regions, etc. Once you've chosen the product that you want to save and the period and the marketplace, usually we just default that, uh, then you can come down here and you can also add manual spikes on top of that if you want. I don't recommend it, but you can. You can save and apply to all products or any grouping of products, just like the rest of your forecast tools. Now, if I save and apply to any grouping of products, 
it's going to give me these options. Uh, the first one is just turn on automatic seasonality weekly because I've chosen weekly at the top. And what it'll do is it will take each product that you're turning on and it will take weekly uh, weekly seasonal percentages, but it's going to use the percentages for that for each individual product in your catalog and turn it on for those in, those products respectively. Now, if I wanted to override them and I say, you know what, I want to use this exact percentage graph, the salt and pepper shaker, this one that I chose up top, and I want to save these percentages across my entire catalog or whatever grouping I've chosen down here, I can also do that. So let's say I wanted to filter a grouping of products that I had just launched and I didn't have any sales history, but I knew that they were similar in sales patterns based on product research to this product. I might choose this product and use this seasonal curve as a baseline for those products until I've built a year of, of sales that I can duplicate for each of those products. So I can do that. And there's also a couple, uh, there's also a couple other options down here. Like if I, if I had done this a few times in the past and I just wanted to reset my seasonality and I had some over, override settings in the past, I could reset everything and I can also include or exclude my manual sales spikes. But for the most part, what we're going to do is when you come into this tool, all you're going to do is you're going to come in again, you're going to click here. You're just going to turn it on. It's going to default to monthly. In this case, I'm going to switch to weekly and I'm going to use each product. I'm going to save and apply to all and each product will get its own seasonal curve based on its own past performance. So I'm going to turn this on. Yes. And I'm just going to do the standard save and apply to all using that setting. So I'm going to pause the video while it's loading. And it usually takes a few minutes. And when it's done, you'll see that it says automatic instead of off. And we can just double check our work to make sure that it saved properly. And it did. So now you're going to see that instead of having black numbers on the side, most of them are blue. What that means is that blue means clickable. But you can see now my new seasonal curve has been applied. And these are weekly numbers. So if I switch to weekly, this is going to be a good apples to apples comparison. So this is last year. And this is the next year. Now, this is a very important part. Since we're looking at weekly percentages down here, what we want to do is we don't want to, we don't want to compare apples to oranges. So what I want to do is I want to turn off most of this data because if I'm doing a weekly calculation of my seasonality, but I'm using historical data that goes way further back than a week, this is not a realistic comparison. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn off most of these. And just a good rule of thumb is try to match your velocity period to the to the seasonal period that you're that you're saving. So for example, if I'm doing a weekly seasonal period, then I want to compare it to a weekly average. And I might do a combination of both of these. This is what I'm currently selling right now. So I'm going to resave this for this particular forecast. And I might go ahead and even just save and apply that to all if I want to apply this setting. So again, good rule of thumb. And it doesn't apply in all cases, but for the most part, I want to compare weekly sales, right? What I'm doing right now compared to a week by week seasonal curve. Notice how the graph completely changed. I'm selling more now than I was before. So why would I want to look at this data that was half a year old when I was barely selling anything back here if, if I'm calculating each of the future uh, periods based on today's velocity? I want it to be calculated off that new baseline. And here's how the baseline actually works. I'm going to break down the math for you. So what we're doing is let's go back and look at the period that we're in right now. We're in period number one, which is 165. Now, this is a, a weekly calculation. So bear with me as I break down the math because it does get a little bit complex, but I think you'll understand once I get through it. L this week, last year, we sold 140 units, which was 160% of our annual average for the year. We talked about that earlier. So let's just remember 165%. And let's go to today's velocity. What the system is doing is it's saying your current velocity, 23.75, is 165% of what? We're solving a kind of an, uh, an algebra equation, if you will. We have two variables that we know, and we're solving for x, which is the new normal. This number is 165% of this number, which is the black line that you can't really see, but that's your new normal. 
So t here's how we figured out. 23.75 divided by 165% equals 14.39 per day. Now we're looking at daily instead of weekly because this is all calculated daily. So 14.39 is my adjusted velocity. Really this could say new normal or baseline or whatever that is. That's, that's, if you can imagine if we switch this to a daily graph and I could draw a line in the middle of here at 14.39, 14.4, that would be the baseline that all future seasonality is calculated either up or down from. Does that make sense? So today we know that we're selling more than 14.3 as evidenced by this. This is reality. I can't change this. I know what we're selling right now. We're selling 24 units a day, 23 and a half. So the difference between my baseline and what we're actually selling right now is that plus or minus number. Okay. Okay. So again, current velocity divided by seasonal percentage, which is what we're doing here, the seasonal percentage that we're in right now, equals new baseline. That's the formula. It's going to take the baseline, which is that 14 number. It's going to take 14.39 and then multiply it by whatever the seasonal percentage is moving forward. So in this case, it's 14.39 times 165% gets us back up to 23.75. But let's go to the next period. Let's pick a random period in the future, just so you can really understand how this math works. Let's pick, I don't know, this one right here. Okay, so in June, in June of 2020, or sorry, June 20th, let's go find that on the, on the little map here. June 20. We're, uh, that was a 61% week. Great. So let's go to June 20 in 2023. June 20. Here's how the math works. We know our baseline calculated from today. We've already discussed that. Current velocity divided by current seasonal percentage equals baseline. And now we're going to take that current baseline, 14.39 times 61% equals 8.7. So that's where it gets 8.7 right here. And the difference between this and 8.7 is 5.61. We're adjusting up or down from that baseline and that's all it's doing. It's simply remapping that new normal. It's recalculating that new normal and then applying these percentages up and down against that new normal every week or every month or every quarter or whatever, depending on your period. The other one that I would recommend is do not use do not use the automated seasonality with last year's sales. Why not? Because last year's sales is has seasonality built into it. Now, this is a tool that we don't really use as much anymore. Some people really love last year's sales. And all you're doing is you're looking at last year, what you did day by day, and duplicating it exactly instead of using these averages. So we're not going to, we don't want to mix last year's sales with the automated seasonality tool because you're basically trying to overlay seasonality percentages against a graph that's always changing anyway. So again, all we want to do is choose the correct period of time, whether it's an average or the month or the week against the month or the week period that you're doing here. The other tool that I would recommend turning off is if you're using the trend tool. Again, these are kind of older tools that we use to kind of figure out seasonality when we couldn't, when we didn't have the automation built. So you don't need to have the trend tool turned on. Okay, I know that was a bit of a longer video, but there's a lot into this tool. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, but I wanted to give you the formula and the theory behind it and the math so you could think with that moving forward as well as the best practices. Cheers.